How you doing? Damien here. I'm going to be covering today a really, really cool little module. Um, it's called the Challenge of the Frog Idol. It's by Dyson's Logos. It's free. And I'll be honest, it's more than a module. It's like a setting. It's only 20 pages or just over 20 pages long. At, but I think you could run it for months with a little bit of work um, with adding some stuff to it. And I'm also going to show you how you can do that. Um, some free resources that you can do. So um, let's just get stuck in. So this is the adventure so it's from the Dyson's logos blog um, which you can pick it up for free make sure that you head over to this blog even if you don't pick up this adventure Dyson's logos is freaking amazing it's one of the best resources out there for RPG maps um, and adventures and just loads and loads of cool stuff um, this was done in 2011 it was thrown to literally thrown together for a competition I think it might have won it um, but it's really really cool um, link below that you can pick this up and download it for free. Um, so let's just jump in and go through why I think it's great and how you can expand it as well. So um, first off, it's really, really interesting. So um, it's set on the broker on the backdrop of a conquested uh, dwarven citadel called Kuhn. It was uh, beaten by the, uh, the giants beat them. So this is kind of like the back backdrop of it. You have this broken citadel, which nobody can get to because the giants are essentially guarding it. Um, but you also have this town, which is called Coravoon. Uh, this this town was thriving, but now that the Citadel isn't there, there's no longer the stuff going through. So it's a slowly dying town. Um, now, in this town, the way that the starting point is, they, they, they have some rumor tables for you to share information. And, and as players go through, they're going to learn more and more about the history and such. The rumor tables are fantastic. They're really, really cool. They have rumor table for Coravoon. And again, as all good rumor tables sh should have, they should have both free or both uh, true and false stuff in it. And the majority is true. They've got rumors about the Dwarven Citadel of Kuhn that's been frozen or that's been conquered, I should say. And they've got rumors of the Black Mire. So this entire town is surrounded by this area called the Black Mire, which has essentially been liquefied. Um, so uh, it's got rumors of that. Now, there's some really cool little throwbacks in here. Um, here, it says a, one of the rooms is Ski Wiz is a lizard man for We Seek No Conflict. Anybody who's read Keep on the Borderlands, which if you haven't, you should do. Um, this, this is a throwback or a little thing to, to Bree Ark saying that the goblins we surrender, which I, I these things make me smile because I'm sad. Um, so, great little map of the city of Coravoon. Um, and again, what I love about this module is it gives you so much with so little. Remember, this is only 20 pages, and I reckon you could run it for months. Um, so, Coravoon is... So, the, here's a little line. The classic frontier town, rough, mostly lawless, built up around a gladiatorial arena. It's a tiny sentence, but immediately it gives you a sense of how... You, you could run so much off this town with that one tiny sentence, which is... Great, great design. Um, it gives you information about the, the the people that live there. I absolutely adore this line. Only a scattering of dwarves who live in quiet shame that they are that they are are not either trying to reclaim corn or were slain defending it. Immediately, you know how to play the beaten and broken dwarves in this settlement in the most undwarvish way, um, shrouded in shame. That's like that's epic. Um, gives you information about the economy of the town, which is really, really important. Um, things have just really died down because they're not getting this through flow. But there's a nice kind of like interplay with a couple of factions here. You have the city guard, which is huge. Um, there's a garrison there. Um, and you have the Red Lanterns. So the Red Lanterns are uh, the houses of real repute. As this town has died and died, it's become one of the only businesses that have grown and grown and got more and more powerful because there's nothing to do. So this is really in, could be a really interesting interplay between the two of them. There's a re arena in this town, which is a center play. Having a, a fighting arena in a town is always a good thing with PCs. Um, so you know what's going to happen if PCs end up getting into trouble. And they've got the big garrison there. And there's a couple of lines here, which again, in a tiny paragraph, give you so much to riff off. Uh, the garrison troops are generally bored and easily distracted. So you exactly know how they're going to be milling around the town. Uh, occasionally uh, can react to crimes and perceived crime or perceived crimes with alarming zeal and violence. Those arrested by the garrison will generally find themselves fighting it out in the arena. You know that if your players get into trouble in this town, which they inevitably will, there's too many for the garrison for them to fight, so you know where they're going to end up. That's at least a session or a couple of sessions of fun in and around that, um, which is brilliant. Now, within this town, there's an Alabaster Oracle. 
This essentially, and there's a nice interplay with gods in this. This was the bride of one of the gods, and you'll be coming back, and this person or this uh, living statue um, can basically help direct the, the the PCs, which is really cool. Um, so here's the here's the map. Each of these hexes is about six miles, so you can see how much potential you've got in here to actually play and expand as you go along. And I'll be showing you how you can expand it really easily for free as well. Um, you have these walkways which are enchanted, which allow players to walk around the um, the swamps. And again, it's just a nice little different backdrop. I've never run an entire campaign in and around um, a, a, a swamp, essentially. So again, really, really cool descriptions in this. And remember, this is free, only 20 pages long. The land liquefied. Several alien gods and other realms arrived to stake their claim here. Now most are dead, the rest forgotten. Only three have any real presence remaining. The Frog God, Pluris God of Rain, and Froom. These gods will win to play as you go through, um, which is really, really nice. And it kind of like improves the, the module as you go on. And players will be able to discover stuff as they go as well. So the only disappointing thing for me is the, um, the encounter tables. They're boring. Could definitely do. That would be the first thing I'd be tweaking if I was going to run it. Um, the one nice thing on this one, though, is there is an ancient traps when you're walking on the causeways. Um, that becomes a little bit more interesting. Um, so, yeah, these these could definitely do with a bit of improving as you go along. The ancient traps are nice, and they are different depending on who's in the party, which is nice, um, or what, what kind of races are in the party. You have the idol of the frog god. When you meet the idol, it... It will offer to help you. So it, ideally the players are going to be wanting to get into the Fortress of Corn, which is going to be full of treasures. The Fortress of Corn isn't included in this. Remember, it's 20 pages. Um, but the, the Frog God is going to help you do that. But what it wants is it wants you to bring back its three engagement gifts, which means essentially the players are going to have to go on adventures around this swamp, trying to find these things and bring them back. Um, so th they have to quest around to, to in order to find this stuff. Um, and uh, when they do it, the, the, the um, frog god or the frog idol is going to give them a really specific magic item. So it's not going to break the game, but it's going to let them be invisible within a certain area of giants, which means there'll be giants and ogres, which means there's going to be a lot of fun had when they eventually, or if they eventually do get to that um, citadel. So within this module, you've got a troglodyte village, but it's not your normal trog village. It is um, essentially, it, there's, there's humans. If, if the players decide to dig deeper, it's humans that have been mutated, which leaves them with a real big issue of what they are actually going to do about this because they seem to be happily mutated, but it's it's definitely a bit off and twisted. Um, there's a, a, a massive zombie island that's floating, which is where one of the other items are. Um, it's on the back of undead crocodiles, so they're going to have to find that and be able to continue to find it and deal with an entire island that is essentially a zombie with a zombie master in there. Um, very, very cool stuff. And um, there's a Nixie pool, where, which is one of them. There's 36 Nixies there, but they can summon giant ba bass. Um, because of the nature of the environment, just fighting isn't always... And because it's an old school adventure, just fighting isn't always going to be, or often not going to be the best way. So they're going to have to find ways in and around negotiation and such to, to actually get through this. Um, and there's a labyrinth of one of the other gods. Um, it's got a cool little curse in the middle of it. The curse isn't going to kill the players. It's not going to destroy them. It's not going to make them hate the game, but it's going to be a pain, which is kind of like a nice little curse. Um, Froom. Froom is one of the other gods. This one really doesn't want the frog idol to get what it wants. So as soon as you start to gather this stuff, this god is going to start messing with the players, which is again is really, really cool. Um, it's then that the random tables improve because they start to replace items on them. So, um, and then there's the uh, um, kind of like the, the the entrance to the fortress. Now, as I said, the the um, the city of Corn is not included because obviously you couldn't include an entire citadel. It suggests putting in your favorite mega dungeon or a mega dungeon to replace it. So we're going to cover now very briefly how you can expand it. First way to expand this is um, head to Dyson's Logos. Um, at the very bottom, Dyson's Logos is an amazing website. Um, if you head head across to there, when you go down to the bottom of it. You keep on scrolling, you'll find a little search bottom box. Search for a couple of the main key terms in this. This is a search that's been thrown back for Blackmire, and you find all of these other things that are going to give you new maps and such that you could use for the area. Um, and so here is a small ruins that you can throw in there. Um, and again, there's multiple versions of the map that you can use. 
uh, Vault of the Ghost King. Um, so you've got loads and loads of maps that you can throw in and expand and populate depending on what how your players have interacted with this world. So there's loads and loads of stuff you could do there to expand. So the next thing was what would you do use for the Citadel? Now there's a bunch of modules you could use and take bits out of and like loads and loads of stuff, but I wanted to look for something free. Um, I googled and I found this thing called the Dark Citadel. It's released by somebody called Joseph Moore and you can get it for free on Dragon's Foot. Again, I'll throw the link below. Um, nice thing about this is there's a, a couple of things you download there. One is a map pack. Um, and a lot of them are Dyson's Logos maps, which is really cool, so it ties into the feel. Um, but also there's this module. I have not read this module. This module is 182 pages. Now, I don't know how good it is, um, because I don't have time to read 182 pages, but this definitely would give you enough stuff from my little scan of it that you can then start to use this and just pull bits out and cannibalize it and take whatever you want. Um, Remember, you don't need to get all this stuff ready to start running. You can start running this module and see what happens. Uh, there's more than enough stuff in, in the, the, the 20 pages that Dyson's Logos gives you for you to actually run this thing and then start to add bits on this. Players can only go so far and do so many things. So in my opinion, this is an amazing module. It's free. What you get in 20 pages is like shocking, well worth doing. And um, yeah, I would, definitely suggest getting it and having a look at it. We've got a couple of cool videos coming up. One of them is going to be a non-review of The Evils of Ilmar, and I'll explain on that one while it's a non-review. Um, if you got to this bit, thank you very much. If you haven't subbed, please do me a favor and do that, and I will, um, I'll catch you again. Take care. Bye.